I'm Danny Helen with Pegasus Robotics. And I'm Nathan Stein. And today we're continuing our process with our spray test analysis. So right here we have all of our paper with our dye swath on it. And then we also have our swath gobbler and our computer to an analyze it. So um, Nate, do you kind of want to explain the swath gobbler to us? Yeah, the swath gobbler here that we have is, you know, obviously a small portable device that we have. And we use it to quickly analyze, like you say, the, the swaths that we've captured out in the field. And this can be run obviously in your car. Um, there's a DC plug or an AC plug that you can plug into your wall here. Um, it's much more comfortable here in the office, so we're going to go ahead and do that here in a short bit. But there's some soft reinstall on your computer, and then you plug in some USB cables and you're ready to go. So now we're going to start in the process. So I have our receipt paper here, and I'm going to get to feed it through the swath gobbler. But before we do that, you have to get it ready. So what are, uh, what are those steps you have to do to prepare it to take in our receipts? Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and set up our swath gobbler. We've got it connected and the powered on. We do connect it to our computer, and then there's some software that I've installed from Application Insight on here that uh, directly connects to this device. So all I have the, those things set up, we're ready to go ahead and uh, get the paper ready. I do have to put in um, a little bit about our test though. So I've already set up um, some configurations for the camera settings there. I put in the date and time for when we flew this test and everything. I've This is an XAG trial, so I'm gonna say XAG1. And then it's the swath number one, and it's XAG, and then the, the model is P100 Pro, and the nozzle size I'm just gonna call standard. The next step is, is we have to start getting the feed in here and get it ready, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click start. And this is a good job to have two people for, or have the roll ready, but I go ahead and tell it where to save my swath gobbler results and it's going to go ahead and start feeding through. So we just finished scanning one of our swath tests for the XAG P100 and now we're going to scan a swath test for the DJI T40. And then once we're done scanning this one they both go into a folder and then we're going to start our analysis and then we'll show you what that looks like too. So now that we've collected all the data from our swaths, we're going to start doing the analysis. So it took about two and a half minutes for us to go ahead and scan these images through and you know 500 images were analyzed and you can see each one of those data points are collected here on this graph that they put in front of us. You know, we can go through and add some analysis notes that we're looking at here. What am I seeing on this? Uh, or I guess, what are you seeing on the swath uh, data that we see in front of us? Well, for one, it looks like we kind of missed by that drop towards the end of there. We definitely missed the paper. Um, but yeah. I know we did have around like six mile an hour wind. So I'm assuming that's a result from like drift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we could have centered our swath a little bit better. And I think we probably could have improved a little bit by probably adding a couple more swath boards, which would have given us at least some extra area to capture out there. This is actually a really good graph. It actually shows that we have normal distribution, that, that nice hump that's statistical. <laughs> and that that's showing us that uh, we're getting a, basically an application that looks a lot like a nozzle, a regular nozzle that we use in agriculture. So that is actually a really encouraging thing to see. And you know we'll set our swath width based on the percent coverage. So we would come in here and look at this percent coverage on each side, and we would measure the distance between here and there, and that would be our effective spray width that we'd want to do. We do want to have overlapping coverage, and this is really a neat thing to have here because now we can say, hey, we want to put you know a little bit of overlap on each one of those, so that the, these areas where there's lower coverage can get enough coverage to, to get the, the product on the leaves. And that's what we really need to make sure that we get a good spray pattern. Okay, so you know, obviously you can see from all the different data that we've gathered, we have a lot more things to analyze and, and to learn about our spray patterns. Um, we can learn a lot about the DJI, we can learn a lot about the, uh, the XAG products that are out there for spray, spray swath width and, and how to better apply chemicals in the field. Yeah, there's many variables that can affect it. Like for instance, we had six mile an hour wind. Um, we, you can also change a lot of things on the graphs with the software to make it more adjustable 
and how it looks to try to see your a final product better. So for instance, the one we showed you today might not have been the actual final graph. We could have adjusted it even more to make it more eye pleasing. Yeah. And that was the process of the Swath Gobbler. So I'm Danny Helen with Pegasus. And I'm Nathan Stein. And we thank you for watching. And if you have any more questions on it, please write down in the comments below. And if you're interested in getting one yourself, please give us a call and like and subscribe for future videos.